As most of you are aware, the 7.5 update recently brought the addition of tier 10 medium tanks and tank destroyers. Only 10% of all our players got to sample them on the test server, so we thought it'd be a good idea if we gave you a brief analysis of their strengths, weaknesses, and idiosyncrasies. In this episode, we'll speak about the new tier 10 tank destroyers. The five new tank destroyers include the Soviet Object 268, the German Jagdpanther E110, the American T110 E3 and E4, as well as the Farsh 155. The Panther has the most health of any of them, at 2,200 HP, while the T110 E3 and E4 are a close second and third, with 2,050 HP and 2,000 HP respectively. The Object 268 just misses the top three, with 1,950 HP, and the Fosh 155 brings up the rear, with only 1,850 hit points. Here, you can see the acceleration and speed of each tank. Obviously, the Fosh 155 is out in front, and the Object 268 is the next speediest, followed by the T-10 E4, with the E-3 and German tank destroyer following behind. The Fosh and the E-4 have the best reversing speed. The Object and E-3 reverse somewhat slower, and the Jagd Panther is the slowest. Let's compare the stealthiness for each Tier 10 tank destroyer to the Tier 9 TD that precedes it. The Object 268 is more stealthy than the Object 704 while on the move, and they have the same chance of being detected while stationary. The Jagd Panther E100 has the same detection chance as the Jagd Tiger while on the move, but it is more easily detected than the Jagd Tiger while motionless. The T110 E3 and E4 are both more stealthy while in motion and while at rest than the TDs that precede them. The Fosh 155 has the same chance of being detected as the Tier 9 tank destroyer. Now, let's go over to the guns. The Object 268 has the best rate of fire. It takes 17 seconds to reload the gun. The T110 E3 is close behind with a 17.5 second reload, while the E4 takes 20.2 seconds to reload. The Act Panther must spend 25.6 long seconds reloading between each shot and it takes the Fosh 155 a staggering 45 seconds to reload. However, you should know that the Fosh's gun is equipped with an impressive three-round autoloader. The time between shots is a mere five seconds, making this one of the most powerful weapons platforms in the game. You can destroy just about any vehicle in the game with it if you've got three perfectly placed shots. As a rule, tank destroyers have some of the most accurate guns. They have little trouble singling out a target at four to 500 meters. The Object 268 happens to be the most accurate tank destroyer, and the rest of the Tier 10 TDs follow fairly closely behind it. Each of the new Tier 10s also have approximately the same penetration value, right around 300 millimeters. Theoretically, you can penetrate the frontal armor of any tank in the game. The E100 pumps out the most damage in one shot at 1,050 points. All the others deal about 850 per shot. We balance the discrepancies with reload times. Typically, more damage equals a longer reload time. Another thing to note is, in comparison to the Tier 9 TDs, the Tier 10 tank destroys that don't have a turret have poor gun traverse. You'll need to rotate more often to line up your shots. Now we'll compare the armor values for the TDs. From the look of its 120mm armor, you might think that everything will be able to penetrate the Object 268. However, the armor has incredible slope, which you're going to add a great deal of bounce to shots fired at it, but it still does have its vulnerable spots. The lower glasses, the rangefinder, the driver's plate are all weak points just like on any tank. Also, the left and right portions of the front plate are slightly less angled, so you might be able to pierce those points even though they do have more armor. The Ag Tiger E100 has very dense armor in the front. At close range, you want to shoot into the coupler. At medium and long ranges, you want to hit it in the lower glasses. Ideally, if you're facing one of these, you'll want to get in close and shoot those vulnerable spots just because the armor is so thick on the front plate and around the gun. Tier 10 guns will be all that can consistently penetrate this behemoth from the front. The American T110 E3 and E4 
have a similar hull to the T110E5 in the American Heavy line. The weak spot is the lower glasses, as usual, and the peepholes, and the machine gun on the E4. The last armor configuration to discuss is the Foshes. The machine gun and peepholes are all fairly easy to penetrate, and try to go for the lower glasses when you can. Another weak spot exists right below the gun, but that means you'll be braving the wrath of Fosh. If you're taking pot shots at a great distance, then there is a good chance you'll ricochet due to the nice slope of the armor. Now, we're going to give you some suggestions for which modules to use with these tanks. We recommend that you use the gun rammer and ventilation for every tank. The third piece of equipment you can choose for yourself, except for the Jagd Panther, you need to take the binocular telescope or coated optics as the third module. It truly needs the assistance of the extra vision. For the other tanks, you might take the camo net or the binox or the gun lane drive. The gun lane drive is almost a must for the Fosh, since it can't take the rammer. Let's talk about some of the battle tactics for these tank destroyers. The Object 268 has a wonderful ability to play the role of sniper, with its low detection potential and high accuracy. It can easily stay on the hill in an assault match of Malinovka without being spotted. Equally so, since it's got good speed, it can rush to a vantage point and put pressure on any incoming vanguard force or scout. The Act Panther E100 is perfect for defending a heavy attack. Nobody wants to be on the receiving end of that gun. Even other tier 10 tanks can be left with half of their hit points just after one shot. Lower tier vehicles have a good chance of being killed outright. It can't turn very fast, so don't leave its flanks totally unprotected, but it will act as a major roadblock in almost any case. One of the best things you can do is platoon with one or more Jagd Panther E100s. If you focus fire, you can destroy tank after tank after tank before they ever have time to move in on you. The T110E3 is a surprising brawler, even without a turret. It's got fantastic turret armor and enough maneuverability that it can afford to initiate a close combat fight given the right circumstances. All other times, just sit back Watch the enemy shots bounce off your face while you take careful aim from a distance. The T110E4 is more like a heavy tank with an amazing gun. You're going to want to take advantage of your turret and take as much cover as possible to hide your glasses. This tank is much more of a sniper than its other T110 counterparts. The Fosh 155 is an amazingly dynamic tank destroyer. It's got great speed and a huge damage potential but those same strengths can be weaknesses. Use your speed to get into position, but don't overextend. You do a lot of damage with your three shots, but once you have to reload, you're completely helpless. You can use that same speed to retreat until you're ready to shoot again. Better yet, stick with your teammates and let them cover you. You'll need to read the battlefield to be an effective Fosh commander. In conclusion, all we can say is watch out for these new tank destroyers. They've added a very dangerous element to high-tier battles. Their speed, accuracy, and firepower are not to be underestimated. Roll out.